So you can imagine as an agent, the number of people that were constantly pitching me, pitching our clients, our coaches, our baseball players, our broadcasters. I mean, it was all the time. And, and, and you know, whether it was financial advisors, insurance folks, endorsement opportunities, I mean, it was it was happening a lot. And, and I remember over almost two decades seeing quite a pattern with this. And and I'll tell you a story because to me, I'm, I'm a big story fan. I, I remember once I had a, a coach up in the office and he was sourcing new financial advisors. He had asked for for, for some, some meetings in our office. And so the first financial advisor walks in, he's got 45 minutes with our coach and he sits down and, you know, greets the coach, of course. And then he sits down and he pulls this brochure out out of his briefcase and opens it up. And I mean, it is like thick, glossy, is beautiful, really impressive. He's dressed to the nines, the whole thing. And he starts going through this deck. And, and I watched the coach <laughs> completely check out. And, and then I had, a, a, and then a woman came in next and she sits down and she pops open her laptop. And again, right, super impressive stuff. Just sharp, she's sharp, everything. She's opening up this, this computer and she's kind of leaning in. To, to her credentials, right? Which were really impressive. Again, right? The coach kind of uninterested. And then the third guy walks in and he sits down. I'll never forget it. And he looks at the coach and he says, hey, look, man, before we dig in, tell me this. Who, you know, kind of where, what's your philosophy on money? Who taught you about money? What's your philosophy on money and investing? The coach talked for 20 minutes. I mean, literally, talk for 20 minutes. Now the advisor could be what I call an authentic chameleon, right? He, he could lean into the information that he heard that mattered most to the coach, right? But but here's the thing, you know, often times I would see people stick to their script, you know, lean into that brochure hard, lean into that laptop and all the impressive stuff on there hard, right? What happens when we do that though is we 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 have too much of a transactional approach. We're not as relational as we need to be, need to be. But here's the thing. We have to be relational. We have to get off script at some level. We love to stay on script, don't we? Lean into that computer, lean into that PowerPoint, whatever it is. It's scary to get off script, isn't it? It's scary. But that's when we connect. And that's what these moments are about. It's not about communication, right? It's about connection. We've got to be relational, not transactional. Here's what I would challenge you to do. Trust your preparation. When you walk in there, trust your preparation. Trust your ability to ask great questions and then listen. Really listen because then you can find ways to connect, not just communicate. Here, here's what I would challenge you to remember. When we walk into these kinds of meetings, here's what the people on the other side are thinking. <laughs> They're thinking, do I like you? Do I like you? Do I ever want to see you again? Do I like you? Can I trust you? Are you somebody that I feel like I can trust, right? And can you help me? Can you really help solve this problem that we're meeting about, right? Can you help me? We want to ensure that the people that we're pitching, the people that we're meeting with, that they can scream, they can shout yes, yes, to all three of these questions. So here's my challenge to you. Make sure you keep those three things front and center. Do I like you? Can you help me? And can I trust you? Be relational, not transactional. Have the courage to get off script because that's, that's when we connect and that's when we can serve. 